I've enjoyed our worship so far today. Now this part is a part I don't know whether I can enjoy it as much as having someone else do this. <laughs> it's uh, this morning we're going to be talking about something that uh, you all know more about it than I do. So why am I up here talking to you? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're grateful that you sent Jesus. Now as we talk about faith, and having faith in Christ, our Savior. Having faith in you, Father, the great God, the almighty God of the universe. The one whom we can come to boldly to that throne of grace. Spill out our hearts, our feelings of whether of joy or of sorrow, our burdens we can leave with you. And so today, encourage us as we talk about faith. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hebrews 11 is where we're going to be starting out. And our first verse is what we had for our scripture reading. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So faith is something we don't see. But it says now faith is the substance of something. Substance has to be like this piece of paper. Like this word of God. It's a substance of things hoped for. So we're going to look at some more of Hebrews 11. And we're going to try and see what the substance was of the different ones that had faith in God. So, verse 2. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. By what? Faith. Right. Now, it wasn't something they could see. So, but by that faith, they obtained a good report. Now, through faith, we understand, this is verse 3, that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. How many of you believe that the world was created by Jesus? Just about every hand goes up. Everybody believes that the world was created. Well, it says here that uh, through, through faith, we understand that the worlds were famed by the word of, framed by the word of God. God spake and said, let there be light, and there was light. God spake, and all these other things were created, except for man. He took a little more interest in him and formed him in the image of God. Now, we all believe this. How many of you actually seen it? Not a one. 
not a one. So how come you believe it? It's because you have faith in God, in Christ. It's not because you actually seen it, because you didn't see it. So that's what faith is. Faith is having hope in something you haven't seen as of yet. So, just because we see things happening in our world that we don't like, hey, is that what we have faith in? What we can see? Of course not. We've got to have faith in the one. Hey, how many of you have seen God? How many of you has lived on this earth when Christ lived here? Then how come you believe that he's your savior? It's because you have faith in what the apostles tell you and what those who were eyewitnesses of it. You believe what they have to say about it? And because God doesn't lie. So he didn't write in this book any lie. Well, he didn't write it, actually. There's only one thing that he wrote, and that was the Ten Commandments. The rest of it was inspired by holy men of old. And the Holy Spirit was the one that inspired him for it. Let's look at verse 4. By faith, Abel obtained, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he, being dead, yet speaketh. It says, by faith, Abel offered this better sacrifice. What was it? What substance, then, was it that he was hoping for? That he had faith in. The sacrifice? The lamb? The promise that God was going to send a savior? I think he had more faith in the promise than he did in the sacrifice. But because he believed the promise, he offered the sacrifice. That's why his sacrifice was accepted and Cain's wasn't. Because Cain brought a sacrifice of what? Fruits and vegetables or whatever. But it was not what God asked for him to do, to represent that he had faith in God's promise. But being dead, he yet speaketh. Now, how can that be? How can that be that Abel is still talking? by his very blood that is spilt and went soaked up into the earth. You see, blood represents the life. So, actually, then it was his life that is speaking. How do we know about Abel? Right here it is. In God's word. So, Abel had faith in God's promises. And these are God's promises right here in his word. All right, let's go on to, to verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, 
he had this testimony that he pleased God. He pleased God. And it pleased God then to translate him and take him to heaven. Now, do you think that uh, Enoch uh, believed that uh, he was going to be translated before the flood? What kind of a translation do you think he really believed in? The resurrection. The one resurrection where you are resurrected to everlasting life. That's what he believed in. You'll find that the book of Jude talks about that. See, so Enoch, his faith was based on the substance that he was going to see and have eternal life. How about you? You have faith based on the same thing? Do I have the faith based on that same thing? It's a question for me to answer. It's for me to make a decision as to where my faith lies and what substance it is that I have faith in. Now, verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well, you can't go along with what they say today, God is dead. Because here it says it is impossible to please God without faith. And you've got to have faith that God exists. Now, I suppose all these things that I've been talking about, you heard them before. So what am I doing? I'm trying to encourage you to have faith in Christ and to hold fast to it and to continue to be faithful. That's what I'm trying to do today. I just want to take you by the hand and say, Lord, here's someone that has faith in you and they trust you, so keep your promises. You see, I'm not trying to bring you something new or something different or try to excite you over something. I want you to have the peace, the joy that Christ offers through faith in him. That's what I want you to have. Now, you may not know everything about all the things that are in the God's word, but you can surely trust him with what you do know. And without faith, you can't please him. Like Enoch did. When I was a kid, and I was going to school in the basement of this church, why, uh, they asked me, uh, what Bible character would you like to be like? Who do you think I talked I, about who I would like to be like? Enoch. Because I wanted to walk into heaven with Christ, with God. Here I am. I haven't walked there yet. But do I have the faith to do that? Oh, on the outside, you may see it very well. But on the inside, what's it like inside? Do I really like him? Do I really love God with all my heart, with all my soul? with all my mind, and do I really love my neighbor as myself? Hey, that's for me to, well, that's my conscience, ain't it? 
Well, that's how the Holy Spirit talks to you and to me is in my conscience. Is my conscience free? Hey. All of these holy men, some were in prison, some were thrown into lion's dens and all that sort of thing. But hey, their conscience was still free because they knew that they had made a commitment to be faithful to God and they were sticking by it regardless, regardless of what happens. Good things or bad things, regardless. That's what they did. Now let's look at verse 7. For by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. There Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. That means that as yet must mean that there was a flood. It came. And he had faith in God. So he built an ark. But he not only built an ark, but he preached for 120 years. Hey, that 120 years was God's mercy towards that world and those people of that time. Mercy, so that they could come boldly before the throne of grace and receive the saving that is needed. But no, he did it out of fear. Was it because he was afraid he was going to die? I don't think so. I think it was out of the kind of fear that you have whenever you have very, very high regard for whoever it is that you are talking to or in whose presence you are. What would you do if all the uh, kings, presidents, and all that of all this world were to meet and you were to come before them? What would you do? Yeah, I think the first thing I'd do is pick out the best clothes I had and wear them. I'd try to make a good impression of some kind because they tell me that the first impression is, uh, is a good one, is usually the one that people go by. Well, if that's what God went by with the impression that I gave him, then hey, I'm doomed. But it's because of 1 John 1 9. Now, 1 John 1 9 says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Well, then, do I, have I seen God wipe my sins off the records in heaven? No. Have I seen it happen yet? No, I haven't seen it, but I have faith that it's going to happen. That his blood's going to cover all my uh, unrighteousness. But he said something else in 1 John 9. He said that he would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, do I have faith he's going to do that? 
I should. Because I believe the first part of that verse. Why shouldn't I leave, believe the last part? Then what in the world am I worried about? Why am I so concerned about whether uh, my mother and father are going to be in heaven? Whether my wife who has passed away, whether she's going to be in heaven? Why should I worry which, about my children, which are, are uh, still living, except for one grandchild who has died when he was only four months old? But how come I would worry about all that? Don't I have faith in Jesus that he would forgive any sin, whatever sin it is? How about would he forgive the sin? Oh, this sounds terrible. Would he forgive the sin of, uh, what's that guy in Germany? Hitler. Would he forgive his sins of all that he did? Of course he would. But remember, he also promises that he would cleanse him from all unrighteousness. Now, I don't know, and no one has ever told me, that Hitler ever repented of what he did. But I do know that the one thief that died with Christ on the, on the cross did because Jesus told him, hey, since you did repent and since you have accepted me by faith, you are going to be with me in paradise. You see, I have the same confidence that Jesus will forgive me and I can be in paradise with him. Now, I can't do that for my mother and father for my wife, or for my children. But I can have faith in Christ that he will do what is best and what he would have for them. Not for what I want, but for what they need and what they want. So why shouldn't I trust God? There's no reason why I shouldn't. Because there's Abel's blood talking to me from, from uh, the earth. Saying that as long as I am obedient and show my faith in Christ. And I am faithful until the end. That I shall be saved. Just like Abel. Now let's look at something else. Let's look at verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place where he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the, excuse me, of the same promise. For he looked for his city, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. What city was he looking for? You see, Jerusalem wasn't a capital of Israel yet. Is that the, what he was looking for? I don't think so. I think he was looking for the new Jerusalem because he's talking of that God, the builder and maker of this city. And I only know of one city that God's going to build. And that's in the future. So, I have faith that I can walk through that pearly gate. Why? Not because I keep the commandments of God, nor because I am obedient, but because I have faith in Christ. See, it is not obedience that saves me. 
It is obedience that demonstrates my faith in who I have faith in or what I have faith in. So if I go out here and I do all kinds of things that I might become rich, I might even steal to do that, hey, who do I have? What do I have faith in? Do I have faith in God? I have faith in, well, maybe not really myself. I've sold my soul to the devil. And if he don't give me money and all that, why? That makes me think, even though I profess to be a Christian, that makes me think I should walk away from God. Should I walk away from God? Of course not. No, because my only hope is in Christ who liveth in me. That's my only hope. And that's how we get that righteousness of Christ, is by him living in us. Now, there is one text I want you to take the time to look at, and it's Romans 5, verse 10. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. See, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us, and he has reconciled us by the death of his, God has reconciled us by the death of his son. It's Christ's blood. That reconciles us to God. Now let's read on. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by what? His life. Because the life we live is polluted with sin. So, Christ in me and Paul says, I die daily, but I still live because Christ lives in me. So Christ living in me, it is his righteousness that covers me like a garment. And it's called a wedding garment in the parable of the wedding garment. So it's his righteousness. How do I get that? By my obedience? No, by my faith that Jesus is going to do it for me. See? Well, then what should I do? Do like my son did whenever he thought he didn't have to wear the coat to go outside when it was cold? He squirmed. He kept pulling his arm out of the coat. Finally, I had to do a little persuasion to get him to put the coat on. <laughs> but hey, isn't there a covenant between us and God, uh, an agreement? And God says, I will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. I will write my laws in your heart. And the partnership is, in this agreement, is that we are to obey what God tells us to do so God can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. So we're partners with God. Partners with God to save which soul? This soul first. After this soul is saved, he can tell others how to be saved. 
And if I love my neighbor as myself, I'm going to want to tell them about Jesus. Okay. Now, where did I stop? He looked for a city. That was Abraham. Now, Sarah, she had faith too in verse 11. And then it tells about Isaac. Now, there's another one in here. For they that say for such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they have been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Hey, that tells me if I keep thinking about where I come from and how I, God has saved me out of the world, and all of that. If I keep thinking about the world, I want to go back there. So the Holy Spirit has guided me into believing and having faith in Christ. Should I turn my back on him? No. Because once I start turning my back on him, he's gonna, Satan's going to see to it that he gets control and that he takes me all the way to hellfire because he don't want to burn by himself he wants to have as many as he can have burn with him so that he can say as it were to God look you're unfair look at all these people you could have saved if you'd have just saved me too I'd have helped you he would have no he wouldn't have he's a liar and a murderer from the very beginning. Okay. Verse 16 in uh, chapter 11. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. According that was that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. Now see, this is what Abraham believed. He believed that if he sacrificed it, and if he gave his life, and Isaac gave his life that they would be they would be resurrected so he really had faith in the first resurrection uh, let's see there was one other one it talks of Jacob talks of Joseph and of Moses by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, but he and endured as seeing him who is invisible. He's seen the invisible God. How? By faith. Not really, but by faith. See, that's the substance that Moses seen. And it goes on to say other things. It says, by faith, the walls of, on verse 30, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak. And of Samson. 
Well, Samson committed suicide. Didn't he? To somebody, God says, thou shalt not kill. Samson killed himself. Well, what was it that Samson had faith in? He had faith that God would restore his strength. That's why he asked the little boy that was leading him to the pillars, main pillars of the temple. Because he knew that God had ordained him to start the Israelites to be freed from the Philistines. And now he wanted to fulfill his calling. And he had faith that God would do it for him. So he pulled down the pillars. We say he did, but actually it was an angel. And all the Philistine leaders were there in that temple worshiping, and they all died along with Samson. So did Samson kill himself? Yeah. But did Samson also offer his life for to commit to complete his calling? Yes. What kind of an example did Samson have for you and I in this day and age? That he's just a big strong man? Or that he had faith in God? Okay. It's about time for me to stop talking. Because I want you to realize that you and I, no matter how much we have sinned or how much we have done wrong or how much good we've done, how many Bible studies we've given, how many people we baptized, how many people we brought to, uh, to Christ, Hey, that's not what God's looking at. He's looking at, is Richard Hayde still got faith in him, me, in Christ? He said he had faith back whenever he was a boy because he said on his way walking to school, in the little village of Shady Grove that he believed God rather than all the other preachers that said Sunday was the day of worship. Do I still have the faith in Christ? Hey, along the way, I fell off of the path a little. I stumped my toe. I stomped on rocks, I tripped, I almost went into the chasm for to stay. But Christ said, I have something for you yet to do. Is it to say to you today, be faithful? Oh, brother, be faithful. Be faithful. And what is being faithful? But being full of faith. Full of faith in what? Christ and him crucified. 